Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. Father Joseph Pins, Pastor. Father John Broby, Associate Pastor. Entrance Antiphon At your right stands the queen in robes of gold, finely arrayed. We offer this Mass for Mary Thurlong. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. This day we celebrate the memorial of the friendship of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us, in a moment of silence, acknowledge those moments that we did not listen to the voice of a loving mother, and ask God for his pardon and for his forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who made the mother of your son to be our mother and our queen, graciously grant that, sustained by her intercession, we may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns within each of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, as is fitting, because your faith flourishes evermore and the love of every one of you for one another grows ever greater. Accordingly, we ourselves boast of you in the churches of God regarding your endurance and faith in all your persecutions and the afflictions you endure. This is evidence of the just judgment of God, so that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. We always pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, in accord with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all your all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught, but the Lord made the heavens. Proclaim our blessed deed. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! 
you lack the kingdom of heaven before men. You do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You traverse sea and land to make one convent, and when that happens, you make him a child of Gehenna, twice as much as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides who say, if one swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gold of the temple, one is obligated. Blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple that made the gold sacred. And you say, if one swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gifts on the altar, one is obligated. You blind ones, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred. One who swears by the altar swears by it and all that is upon it. One who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. One who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who is seated on it. The Gospel of the Lord. Our text today from Matthew chapter 23, verse 13 to 22, begins the woes. Some scripture scholars will put it the eight woes. Others will put it at the seven woes. A woe is a lament or a will for what will happen to a person at the end of, of their lives. I take that again. A woe in scripture is a lament or a will for, a, for what will happen to a person at the end of their lives here on earth. My dearly beloved in Christ, in Matthew 23, verse 13 to 36, you may add 37, and that will be the end of Matthew chapter 23. That will give you the entire parable. In this passage, Jesus is addressing the leader, the Jewish leadership. And he refers to them as hypocrites. Hypocrites. And he has some very, very harsh words for them. There are people who think that heaven is on top of a very high mountain. And there are several routes to get on top of that mountain. And so it doesn't matter what route you take. You can get on top of the mountain. No, that is not it. Jesus gave only one route. In John chapter 14 verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. The Italian will say, finito, basta. It is finished. No one goes to the Father except through through me. And so when we celebrate the friendship of Mary, let us remember his words to the servants, her words to the servants in John chapter 2 verse 5. Do whatever he tells you. Period. When you go to Mary, Mary will lead you to her son. Because her son is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through him. Now, in addressing the Pharisees and the scribes, Jesus was forthright. He was straight to the point. You hypocrites, woe to you. Who is a hypocrite? Hypocrite, the Greek hypocrites, hypocrites, went through four different meanings. 
It meant a person who answers, as in a classroom setting, a student who answers. Then it moved further to mean statement and answer. Statement and answer as in a stage performance. Then it moved on to mean actor, a person who acts in a movie, a drama, or a play was called hypocrites. During the time of Jesus, it had reached the final stage, an actor in the worst sense of the term. I check that again. In the time of Jesus, hypocrites has arrived or reached the final stage of his meaning. The worst, an actor in the worst meaning of the term. And so when Jesus says to the Pharisees and the scribes, you hypocrites, what it means is they were acting their piety, their holiness, and the righteousness of life before people. But deep down within themselves, and what they do in private was completely the opposite. Matthew Henry a scholar of scripture has this to say about hypocrites. He says, they preach so well, they preach so well that you do not ever want them out of the church. They preach so well that you never want the homily to end. You feel like they should, they should continue, they should go on and on, they should never leave the church. But when they are outside, they live so ill that you never want them to come inside. That is the most beautiful image and picture of a hypocrite that you can ever have. That in church, their behavior, their way of life is so nice, so appealing that you feel like you have encountered God himself. But when you meet them in the mall, when you meet them in the restaurant, when you meet them in Casco, in Heidi, they live so ill that you will never allow them to enter the church. That is a hypocrite. And so in movies, there are people who act as priests, bishops, cardinals, but outside there, my dear beloved, that is not who they are. They are married people and they have life. They live family life. But there are people in movies who acts as armed robbers, the most wicked people on earth, but outside their normal lives, they are the nicest people you can ever encounter. That is, my dearly beloved, what hypocrisy means, behind the mask, behind the mask. There are a lot of us, my dearly beloved, who are wearing spiritual masks. In public, we are different. In private, we live our real lives. Nobody is a hypocrite here. But let me give you three signs of hypocrisy. Sign number one. Do I live for the human audience or for the divine audience? That is the sign number one. Do I live my Christian life, my priesthood, for the divine audience or for the human audience. Number two, is my Christian life in private the same as in public? I take that again. Is my Christian life in private the same as it is in public? Do I pray at set times or I pray all the time? The lifestyle of a Christian is to pray all the time. Even your profession, your work, can, is your prayer life. The way you treat people. When you see the image of God in them, that is a form of prayer. And finally, am I consistent in my Christian life? Let me give a very simple example when it comes to consistency. I am going to the movie theater and it is half price for all kids 11 and below. Now I have a 15-year-old kid 
who is small to be 11, 8, or 9. At the gate, I hear have fries for 11 and below. I tend to look at my kid, and he looks like a seven year old. My faith is tested. Am I going to be consistent and let them know that that care, even though small, is 13 above 11? Or I am going to beat the system? Consistency. Shall we rise in prayer? For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to help each one of us grow in holiness and strength as we journey together in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For all nations, may the Lord foster and increase respect for human life. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are persecuted for their faith, may God uphold and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may God's call echo in our hearts and guide our actions. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the peace of Christ, may God grant them eternal rest and peace in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For our personal and private intentions, let us pause in the silence of our hearts. That we may be true to ourselves in humility and repentance, let us ask our Mother Mary to intercede on our behalf as we pray. Hail Mary. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we observe this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we bring you our offerings, O Lord, praying to be given strength by the humanity of Christ, who offered himself to you on the cross as the unblemished oblation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give a thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hope, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and given thanks and broke it. Gave it to disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of church, Tudor Francis, our Pope, and William Johnson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Mary Fallon, whom you've called from this world to your son. Grant that she was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have filled you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in each of the Holy Spirit, all glory and is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the peace and in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this heavenly sacrament, we humbly pray, O Lord, that we who reverently celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary may merit to be partakers at your eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.